Okay guys, welcome back for the latest episode on the hydroponics versus aquaponics trial. Uh, in this episode, we're going to be focusing a lot around the nutritional elements of the plants. We're going to be looking at how to do um, identify nutrient deficiencies, how to dose for it, how to counteract it. We are also going to be looking at the number one pest, the aphid. Okay, just one thing I would like to cover off today is what I touched on on Friday and that's understanding the nutritional health of your plant. So being able to understand what is deficient and what is not is really critical. Now it feels complicated when you're understanding calcium and iron and magnesium and and all the rest but one of the most important things to understand is what nutrients are mobile and what nutrients are immobile. So what do I mean by that? Well nutrient mobility is basically um, a description of how the nutrients are absorbed into a plant whether they are absorbed into the old leaves first or into the new leaves now if a nutrient is mobile that deficiency will first be seen in the older leaves of the plant and the newer leaves are unlikely to show a deficiency until later versus immobile nutrients the deficiencies will show up on this the the new leaves first and then later in the old leaf. So what nutrients are mobile? What nutrients are immobile? My mobile, main mobile nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and magnesium. My main immobile nutrients are calcium and iron. Now, if you can remember those, you're gonna be off to a really, really good start. So with nutrient mobility, it is so important to be able to differentiate whether your new leaves all the old leaves are showing that deficiency. Let's have a look at this example here once again. If you look at my old leaves, the coloration of my old leaves looking a lot healthier, much greener, it's, it's a darker green. Now that is because of the fact that I added the magnesium last week. The magnesium is a mobile nutrient and as a result, those old leaves would be the ones to first show me that there's an issue. Now on my immobile nutrients, my new leaf is the one that shows deficiency first. If you look closely, this new leaf over here, it is, green, it is paler for one, and the second is you'll see a slight uh, bubbling on that leaf, and that bubbling is a classic telltale sign of calcium. Now calcium is immobile, so I'm expecting on my new growth to see the deficiency start off there. If you remember on Friday, I dosed my, on my hydroponics, my normal hydroponic mix. Therefore today, I'm only going to be dosing the calcium to get my calcium levels up. We also dosed on the aquaponic side and we're gonna see if it actually made a difference. So as you can see, uh, in the morning, my plants do look somewhat healthier and happier um, as a result of it being a bit cooler. Now there has been a lot of feedback and comments around this. So, Obviously, with the hydroponics, this is one of our biggest challenges, is balancing our temperature profiles. And it is very difficult. But what we're gonna be doing here is making sure that we top up our system at midday, therefore adding cooler water from our borehole uh, when it is warm. And that should help to just keep my temperature down a bit. Other than that, if you've got some great ideas on how to manage that temperature better, please put them in the comments. I would love to hear them. Right, let's go have a look at our, our reservoir. And what I'm gonna be doing now is adding calcium sulfate. Now, the reason I've chosen calcium sulfate is when I tested my nitrate levels on Friday, they were perfectly fine. And that is because there is nitrate in my multi-mix. So I've gone for the sulfate and that is purely so I don't push my nitrate levels up. If you have a look, it's in a powder form, all right? So the one thing I have found with this, it doesn't dissolve very easily. So I want to add it and crush it in a bit at a time. Now I'm adding about 30 grams of calcium. And for me, it's about five grams a pinch. 
And what I'm going to do is give it a really good mix. And my target here is to get it up to about 100, 150. But you can see how deficient my system was in calcium. And calcium is one of the core nutrient elements required for good plant healthy growth. Okay, currently it's sitting at 75. So therefore I'm gonna add just a little bit more. Now, as I mentioned, it doesn't all dissolve at once, okay? As you can see, I still have pieces of calcium that are not dissolved. It does sit at the bottom. As I mentioned, it is one of the harder nutrients to dissolve nicely into a system. Uh, so it does take a bit of time to get that all released. But a little bit at the bottom is okay because that's going to be slowly released throughout the next couple days. I think on Wednesday I'm going to add some more multi-mix. I need to give it a couple days for my plants to have a chance to absorb that calcium uh, in, in a reasonable form. Perfect. So it's still going up, sitting at about 100. Um, and I know that there's extra nutrient there at the bottom that will be agitated as we go. My pH has dropped now to a, a healthy five and a half, just under 5.5. That's all right. So, yep, all good. Okay, so there we have it. This is my aquaponic lettuce. This is my hydroponic lettuce. What I'm really excited by is if you remember I added magnesium and iron on Friday, have a look already at the comparison of how much greener this plant is looking. Now, if you look very closely at my aquaponics plant here, you'll see that little bit of bubbling going on, on my leaf. That's a sign of calcium, calcium deficiency. So I am gonna test my calcium and I am gonna dose it. Today is my day for that. And I'll just love to see if that bubbling does go away once we've dosed the, the calcium. Other than that, you'll also notice there is a slight difference in terms of the growth of each plant. Some of them, like this one here, is really just looking a bit sorry for itself. Now, you do get weaker seedlings, and it is normal to have a couple that are laggers in the system. Otherwise, let's go and check our parameters. I'm going to put this guy back just now. Okay. Here my pH is sitting at about 6,8. My water temperature is 20 degrees. And that 6.8, remember, in aquaponics between 6.5 and, and 7 is perfect. Now here I'm adding actually 250 grams of calcium. The reason why I'm adding so much more is because of the size of my system. In here, I've got about 40,000 liters of water as opposed to a couple hundred on my hydroponic system. Now we have seen aphids in the last week starting to make their presence known. Um, the one thing that we do practice on the aquaponic side is preventative spraying. Now as part of my preventative spray, each week I want to spray something like a pyrrole or a bioneme or exterminator and alternate it. And the reason I want to do that is I try to keep the pests away. Once the pests are in, it becomes harder to get on top of them. However, when we see them first appear, we then start doubling up on our spray program. And instead of once a week, we move now to twice a week. So how do we do that spray? Well, there's two main products that I like to use. The one is Bioneem. 
and the other is an exterminator. So the combination of the two, I like to mix them together this week and then next week I'm going to be spraying Pyrol. Now when I'm mixing them, the ratios are uh, 5 mils per litre and you can put them together. And it's very, very often recommended that something like a Bioneem is combined with another product because they work so well together and they help that product almost glue to the plants. So I take my 5 mil measuring cup. I've got a 1 litre spray bottle here. And I've got this. This is full of just water. And I'm going to mix 5 mils of each of these products. Just make sure you mix it uh, first before measuring out. Okay, five mils of that one. And five mils of exterminator. Now, the one thing I like with exterminator is one of the products they put inside it is orange soap. Um, and soap is always, always a magic ingredient to help combat aphids. Both of these products are classified organic and natural, uh, so there is no harm to human consumption by using these products. And I do recommend, you know, once you've made your mix, give it a, a, a name on the bottle so you know what it is, so when you want to reuse it over the next few weeks, you don't have to keep mixing, it's at hand, uh, readily accessible. Okay, give it a good shake and I'll show you how we do the spraying. So, there we go. So try get that fine mist spray. Now a lot of people only spray on top, however what you'll notice is my aphids actually love to hide underneath the leaves. And so taking your care while spraying to get all around the product is really really important the other thing that i always recommend when you're spraying is to spray early in the morning and the reason for that is the one you know some of the active ingredients here are oil based and if you spray them when it starts getting warm what you'll notice is your plants will burn it's kind of like if you go out in the sun and you put oil on your skin if it's early in the morning it doesn't matter but as the day goes on you'll catch a tan very quickly and the other thing that I do like to do when spraying, at the same time I scout and I start looking to see if there are potentially any other insects or critters that I need to take care of. One eternity later. But uh, we'll be back again on Friday. Stay tuned, don't forget to subscribe like uh, and make sure you <laughs> choose that box to be notified when we do our next updates thanks for tuning in bye bye